LD go for launch. 30. Twenty. Stage one is at liftoff pressures. Fifteen. Falcon Heights configured for flight. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. GC copies, we'll go. T plus one minute and 17 seconds into flight, Falcon 9 approaching Max Q. You've heard the call out, MVAC D chilling. We're now getting the second stage engine ready for ignition. Several activities coming up here very shortly. At T plus two minutes and 24 seconds, we expect main engine cutoff, followed immediately by stage separation and ignition of the upper stage engine. Right after that, the first stage will begin the first of three burns to return us back to the Pacific Ocean to the drone ship parked offshore about 300 kilometers downrange. Coming up on Miko. We have Miko. We have back ignition. T plus two Who's minutes and forty seven seconds into flight. We've had successful stage separation and ignition of the upper stage engine. And as you can see, we've also relit three of the engines on the first stage to begin the sequence that will return it to the drone ship in the Pacific Ocean. Boost back burn lasts about 30 seconds. And we have fairing separation. Had a brief view of the Iridium satellites as the fairing separated. Again, it's just before dawn as we head south over the Pacific Ocean, so we're not getting any sunlight. First stage boost back burn did complete. Fairing did successfully separate. We're waiting to hear the drone ship AOS, that's acquisition of signal that indicates the drone ship is receiving telemetry from the first stage. Second stage propulsion continues to look nominal coming up at T plus four minutes into flight.
T plus, five minutes into the flight of Falcon 9 carrying 10 Iridium Next satellites. Next event in our timeline is in about 35 seconds. That'll be a second ignition of the Falcon 9 first stage, what we call the entry burn. This is a burn of three Merlin 1D engines that'll slow us down for the actual re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. The burn itself will last about 13 seconds. Meanwhile, second stage, performance continues to look good. The trajectory is good. Engine parameters look good. Stage one entry startup. And you see the flare on the screen? We have startup. It looks like all three engines are up and running. Also, you can see silhouetted the grid fins did deploy earlier. They'll now be used to guide us as we enter the Earth's atmosphere. And we've had shutdown of the entry burn. Stage one, AFTS has hooked. The autom automated flight termination system, autonomous flight termination system, has saved on the first stage. We're coming up on T plus seven minutes. Stage one is headed back to the drone ship in the Pacific Ocean. Stage two, still headed to its initial parking orbit. Shutdown of the second stage engine should be just over T plus nine minutes into the flight. AOS. Now we're getting ready for the landing burn of the first stage. Landing burn start. Seven and a half minutes into flight, you can hear from the applause, we lost the signal briefly, then it returned with the view of the first stage in that pre-dawn darkness sitting on top of just read the instructions. Out in the Pacific Ocean, a successful landing of the first stage. Meanwhile, the primary mission continuing, the second stage, seven minutes and 54 seconds into flight, a little more than a minute left to go. Propulsion continues to look good on the second stage engine as we power to the low Earth parking orbit carrying the 10 Iridium Next satellites. Elciane, um, zooming in on this fire here. Stage two, AFTS has saved. T plus eight minutes and 38 seconds into flight. We've heard the autonomous flight termination system has been safe on the second stage call. Second stage just about to go into Earth orbit. Call out of SECO, second stage engine cutoff. We're waiting right now for a call out from guidance, nav, and control. They're looking at the orbit of the second stage. Right now it looks at the uh, telemetry we're getting. It looks like we've got a good orbit. This is the parking orbit of the second stage. This is the first of two orbits we're headed to today. Looks like we've got a good one here. What's going to happen now is we're entering a coast phase. You might have heard coast phase entry call out just a moment ago. We're going to coast about halfway around the Earth, passing over the Antarctic Peninsula, come up over Africa. We'll relight the second stage engine very briefly, 
That'll get us into the final orbit from which we'll deploy the 10 Iridium Next satellites. All of that's going to happen at about T plus 52 minutes. So right now, we're just past T plus 10 minutes into flight. We've had a good first stage landing after a great countdown and a liftoff. Second stage performance looked very good getting into low Earth orbit. And so we're now going to go through about a 41 minute coast period. So we're going to leave you an animation showing where the second stage of the Falcon 9 is as we're passing over various features on the Earth. We will resume live coverage of the upper stage mission and the separation of the Iridium Next satellites at T plus 51 minutes after the launch. So about 41 minutes from now, we'll come back, show you the second stage, second burn, and then we'll look for the 10 Iridium Next satellites and their separation. So with that, hang in there with us. We'll be back at T plus 51. Welcome back to our continuing coverage of mission three for our Iridium Next satellite deployments. We're just past T plus 51 minutes since liftoff. We're coming up in less than a minute on reignition of the upper stage engine. This is a short burn of the MVAC-D engine lasting just about four seconds. That'll raise us to the circular altitude of 625 kilometers. Currently on the view from space, we're using cold gas thrusters to help keep propellants settled at the bottom of the tank so that it's right on top of the turbo pump when we spin it for ignition of the engine. So we're gonna, gonna, we're gonna wait right now for ignition of the engine, and then we'll come back following that with a view on how the orbit looks. We've got ignition and we have shutdown of the MVAC-D engine. As I mentioned, it's a very short burn. It does not take much to add a lot of energy to the orbit with the thrust of the second stage engine. What we're waiting to hear right now is what the orbit looks like. And we've heard the call out. Guides Navigation and Control has announced a nominal orbit insertion. So we're through the second burn of the upper stage engine. As you can see on the screen right now, a little bit of what you're looking at, that is uh, oxygen, icy oxygen. There's a nice view of the iridium satellites. We're gonna go through a period of about five minutes as we get the second stage pointed in the right direction, make sure all the attitude and rates are correct before we begin the 15 minute sequence of deploying iridium satellites. First spacecraft deploy confirmed. And we have confirmation. First spacecraft deployment is confirmed. I think we could see a little bit of motion there. That one was coming from the top of the stack, so it's kind of hard to see with the other satellites underneath it. Second spacecraft deploy confirmed. We have confirmation. Spacecraft number two has deployed. You can see it just moving off at the very top of the screen before the camera cut back. That's a view of the upper stage engine. For those who are wondering, that white uh, lump that you see on the edge of the nozzle, that is solid oxygen. So if you can imagine the oxygen you breathe, not only is it cold enough to turn liquid, it's cold enough now in space to actually turn to liquid oxygen or solid oxygen. It's an oxygen ice. That's of no issue to the vehicle. You may see those chunks dislodge from time to time. Uh, they're very light and uh, easily broken apart. Third spacecraft deploy confirmed. Avionics confirms deployment of the third satellite. So that's three out of 10. Do the math, seven to go. Right now, another 100 seconds We'll just go through it like clockwork. The second stage flight computer sending commands on 100 second intervals. We're working the first five satellites that are at the top of the stack. As I mentioned, there are two layers of Iridium Next satellites, five on top, five below. The ones you can see best are the five that are on the bottom stack, closest to the camera on the payload attached fitting. The ones we're deploying right now are coming off of the top of the stack. Three of them are complete, two of them to go. 
spacecraft deployed. And there you get a great view of the fourth satellite deploying, just top dead center of the stack, and nice view of the payload attached fitting camera. Now, of course, with the uh, cameras on the second stage, uh, we bounce between engineering views. Uh, many of the propulsion team, for example, uh, need to take a look at the second stage engine so they can assess its performance, even when it's not running in the vacuum of space. And then we also bounce and look at the forward-looking camera to pick up the Iridium next satellite deployments. Fifth spacecraft deploy confirmed. Avionics Engineering confirms successful deployment of the fifth of the ten Iridium Next satellites. Sequence continues to be clocked out by the flight computer mounted on top of the second stage, sending signals to the controller up on the payload attach fitting that then routes the separation signals to each of the ten Iridium Next satellites. Spacecraft deploy confirmed. And you had a great view. Now we're working on the lower half of the dispenser. The sixth satellite deployed, we could see it drifting away, a nice nominal release, not, a, not tipping it off, just moving it straight away from the dispenser, and great view from the payload attached fitting camera. Same time also on the daylight side of the Earth, we're getting some great views of the spacecraft and the Earth in the background. That spacecraft and it took a minute, but we've got confirmation it appears we're getting some dropouts in telemetry, so the call was a little bit late, but number seven is on its way. Eight spacecraft yep. Again, you saw by our graphic, the Falcon 9 symbol superimposed. We lost data, it looked like, for a few seconds from the second stage. Then we got it back over the next ground station, and we have confirmed the eighth satellite has deployed on time. Two satellites to go. Ninth spacecraft deployed. Beautiful view of deployment of the ninth of ten Iridium Next satellites. Gorgeous shot. You might have seen also some bright dots in the background. I believe those are some of the other Iridium satellites that were deployed just in the last several minutes. So essentially a long string of beads as we're moving away from the Falcon 9 second stage. Final spacecraft deploy confirmed. T plus, one hour, 12 minutes, 17 seconds. Since a great liftoff, the 10th and final Iridium Next satellite has deployed right on time. So we're 10 for 10. Again, a clean sweep of Iridium Next satellite deployments in the desired final orbit. It's been a great morning. Countdown on time. We hit the instantaneous launch window of one second. First stage successfully landed on our drone ship in the Pacific Ocean. Second stage got into both the low Earth parking orbit, then relit its engine halfway around the world, got into the desired final orbit, and as you stayed with us for the past 15 minutes, you saw the great series of deploying 10 Iridium Next satellites. So that's going to bring an end to our webcast, or as uh, I'd like to say, a very normal webcast for us. We'd like to thank our Iridium Next customer the Air Force for range support, and our government licensing agency, the Federal Aviation Administration. Also invite you to follow us on social media, on our Twitter feed, as well as on Instagram, and of course, on our internet webpage at SpaceX.com. We'd like to thank you for letting us share the 14th flight of Falcon 9 with you. We look forward in a couple of days to the 15th flight, and until that webcast, you're signing off, saying thank you, and goodbye.